We're looking for the start. The Virginia is for lovers. Modified 150 is green and racing from Richmond. Ronnie Silk from the pole position. Sails off into turn one on the bottom lane of the racetrack, and he'll bring Austin Beers right along with him as they race off the back straightaway for the first time here in the Richmond Breakaway event for the Wheel and Modified Tour. Moving quickly into that third spot, it is Jake Johnson. Inside lane was the advantage of the first five cars. They thundered down into turn number one. Four cars have pulled away. Then it's a side-by-side -side battle, Joe. It is the number seven New York. That is Doug Covey. He's contending for the fifth spot. But out in front, nose to tail, it is still Silk the leader. Austin Beers, a little bit loose that time. Here's the side-by-side -side battle we were talking about. Craig Lutz working down to the inside lane of the number 46 as he tries to pick up a spot. Up front, though, Justin Bonsignor started on the front row. Now he is side-by-side, -side, headed down the back straightaway underneath the 64 of Austin Beers. Beers was a driver who picked up his first career victory here a year ago. He was fastest in practice won the pole and then he won the race and that launched a two win season for the young driver it certainly did now keep your eyes on jake johnson in the bowler number three car the lens propane machine he is trying to follow the 51 of bonsignor to the front of the pass remember now the number three machine might be considered a surprise to some but the history of the bowler family and now look at doug Kobe, the baldwin number seven car has moved into the back bumper of the number three car as they head off the turn. This time it appears that Austin Beers is literally hung out to dry in the outside lane. Doug Kobe, that seven your car looking very good here in the early stages. He was able to reel in those top four competitors after the initial start. Just a week ago, Luke Baldwin picked up a victory. Tommy Baldwin's son, the car owner, and the king of the modified race at South Boston. A huge event that he was able to capture. And boy, what a big moment for the Baldwin family. He was driving for Hermie Sadler and Bill Stanley, the team that uh, Bobby Labonte drives for today. But that was a big story for the Baldwins over the past week. It certainly was. Now keep your eyes on the 46 machine of Craig Lutz, the Riverhead Building Supply car. He is working the back bumper of the number 23 car of Carlson Lofton. Remember, the Goodies Racing number 46, this driver, Lutz, returned to this car. He had three wins for this race team before. He's looking to be back in winning form. He was great at New Smyrna. Will he be good here today? Carlson Lofton, think about it, the youngest driver in the field, car number 23, looking racy meanwhile right behind him literally joe a conga line of some of the hottest drivers on the modified tour to date you look at carson lofton in the 23 that's that 16 year old craig lutz in the 46 whatever that combination is with craig lutz and goody motorsports it just works the magic and the crew chief doug ojanko they're a combination that have put fast race cars together we certainly expect him to be good as the race goes on started in the sixth position he's fallen back a little bit since the start of the green flag and he is now trying to make up for that lost ground here is trevor catalano we highlighted him earlier Earlier in the day, he came home fifth in his debut race in the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. That was two months ago at the New Smyrna Speedway. Now qualified ninth, and he's working down to the inside, trying to pick up the eighth spot underneath the Craig Lutz 46. While he's doing that, directly behind him is the LFR house car. Patrick Emmeling, a driver who competes on the trucks in the Fleet Works of California car. This car, they expected big things out in the first event, fell a little bit short, but today it all could change directly behind the number one car is a good battle between Kyle Von Senor, Bobby Labonte, and Tommy Catalano running in their pack of cars there. Here's a battle for the race lead. Justin Bonsignor goes out in front here, 11 laps into tonight's event. Bonsignor to the point for the first time. We talked about in the open how, you know, all season long, it was a 51 of Justin Bonsignor, the 16 of Ronnie Silk who are battling first, second, the whole nine uh, throughout the entire season. Ron Silk goes out and wins the race at New Smyrna, and it really, I think, put everybody else back on their heels saying, you know, we worked all winter long to try to see if we could find an answer for Ronnie Silk, and at New Smyrna, nobody could, but they've had about two months to prepare for today's race. They certainly have, and Phil Moran knows how to, oh, trouble now! Darting out of line, he tags the wall. It is car number 64, Austin Beers. 
right front wheel is peeled back on the race car. We kind of caught the very end of that, Joe, in the situation there as Austin Beers was running at that particular point in the event, challenging among the top three cars. And there you see the highs and lows of the sport a year ago. He was the guy that dominated the racing action. And now, already early in this competition, you can see the right front wheel sheared back on that car as well. Another casualty, the Propane Plus number three car, Jake Johnson, who was running third at the time. He has a flat right front on that car, and that possibly is where the contact might have began. We'll take a look at it if we can get a replay of that situation there. But what a heartbreaker for Austin Beers. Austin is part of a three-generation family of racing. His grandfather competed at the old Dorney Park Speedway, his dad, Eric Beers, and here's a look at it. Darting to the inside was the three car. It looked like there might have been, what do you think, Joe? Well, by the way, the 64 car took up the racetrack and the right front tire that's down yep. on the three car of Jake Johnson. It was certainly some contact there. We're gonna look at it now coming down the back straightaway. Watch Johnson dart to the inside. And boy, you know, that is hard to tell whether or not there was contact or not on that angle. It certainly is. There's the spring off the right front wheel of the 64 car. You know, as they're going into that turn, momentum will determine where you set the car up. And as he tried to hold his line and stay down, it appears that Jake Johnson was right there on the inside. So that car sets with a flat right front. You can see the dejected Austin Beers heading back uh, to uh, his crew, Ronnie Uhouse and company. Murph, here's another look at it. Down the back straightaway. Here comes the number three car darts to the inside while the 64 is trying to run. The old saying is for the same airspace and Jake Johnson and Austin Beers come together and the guy who got the worst of the wear last year's winner of this event. It's a pretty late entry it looked like for uh, Jake Johnson really drove deep down at the bottom of turn three and uh, the two apparently coming together as a 64 of Austin Beers went hard into the outside wall. We saw Austin climb out of that race car. That's a very hard hit. You see the right front damage on the Jake Johnson machine. You'd have to think that they certainly came together uh, when they came down into turn three. But when we saw that angle on the inside of the race very track, tough. it's tough to tell where they actually yes. made contact because Johnson was now, pretty well alongside of them before uh, the 64 car of Austin Beers took off the racetrack. Now take a close look at that. We just missed it for a second, but the rub rail or the right side nerf bar on the number three car was not damaged at all. What that simply means, the contact was made between the two cars with the right front tire and rim, Joe. See that rub rail? It's almost perfectly straight. It isn't collapsed. It isn't damaged whatsoever. So we hit basically on the rim. It collapsed the tire and the two came together and the end results is not good for two of the young superstars in uh, racing and modified racing today. Jake Johnson, a standout at the Seacock Speedway where he competed there in pro stock and late model competition. Dad raced at Thompson, truly one of the nicest families there is. This kid's got a ton of talent. A great story about him, Joe. He had a matchbox car of the bowler number three in his bedroom as a youngster growing up at six, seven, eight years of age. And he said, Dad, someday I want to drive that race car. That's how dreams come true. Joe, you've got kids. You can relate to that as well. Yeah, and there's a little kid in all of us, there especially is. when it comes uh, to going racing. So Jake Johnson, uh, trouble at New Smyrna. He ended up uh, with a penalty that cost him a lot of time and really was never able to recover from that. This is a tough start for them running full time this year. There's the Austin Beers, uh, number 64, heavy right front damage after that incident up there in turns three and four. The other situation that I noticed as the car was coming down on pit road on the hook, it looks like the radiator is punctured. The front horns of the car, they are actually bolt-ons in front of the radiator itself, but there was fluid coming out. Ronnie Uhouse and company and that well-diverse crew is got their work cut out for them. Sly Zabin, who's been creating a lot of magic. Sly is the shock builder for a lot of these teams in the competition here. Joe, as we look down and uh, take a look back at the top 10, 
Kyle Bonsignor has moved into the 10th position. Craig Lutz being shown unofficially in ninth. Patrick Ebeling in eighth. Trevor Catalano is up to seventh. Uh, Carson Lofton in sixth. Bobby Santos is fifth. Fourth is Doug Colby, and then Jake Johnson was running third, is going to drop back. So that's going to move everybody up. And, of course, Justin Bonsignor and Ronnie Silk. You know, you have to wonder, Joe, as you work uh, and find the magic on pit road, that these different teams, even though they're rivals, they work together on the combination. Well, they do. A lot of these modifieds are, are pretty similar, and it's a matter of trying to make those adjustments to be able to get the maximum performance out of your race car on race day. Field stopped on the back straightaway under the red flag here after the first incident of the event involving Austin Beers and Jake Johnson. We'll step aside and come back with more action in the Virginia's for Racing Lovers 150 for the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. We're under the red flag at Richmond Raceway. The Virginia's for Racing Lovers 150 for the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. Just 13 laps into today's event. The red flag out for an incident between the 64 of Austin Beers and the three car of Jake Johnson. Austin Beers into the outside wall in turn three. His night is done. And under the red flag, Jake Johnson sitting on the back straightaway, still in the top five but right front damage that'll force him to come down pit road. Absolutely will. And for those of you that are watching on flow, you might wonder why the number three car is still setting on the racetrack, why it hasn't come down on pit road. The call is simply under a red flag situation, the car has to stay as the red flag came out. When the caution comes out, he'll head back down on pit road. We just saw a minute ago the uh, number 64 car, and it didn't look like there was a lot of work going on there and that's a tough situation as we said for that team who are looking for big things sounds like they're about ready or if not already have been firing them back up watch the number three car quickly head back down to pit road that 64 car of austin beers that team has been very very cohesive i think they were very optimistic coming into here i know i agree coming out of new Smyrna, they didn't get the result that they wanted to have they they thought that they were going to be able to compete for the win uh, they never really showed that strength but they knew coming into Richmond, certainly with the success that they had last year, uh, that they would be a contender and prove that in qualifying, running third, but just 13 laps in. I mean, that's the way this sport goes. One day you're on the top of the heap, the next thing you're at the lowest part of the valley, and that's going to be the case for Austin Beers and that entire 64 team. They are now going to have quite a hole to dig themselves out of as the season rolls on. Sure are. You know, let's go back to a year ago at New Smyrna when that team was running up front of the competition. They had a problem on pit road, a mechanical problem that forced them out. Now, as you look to the right of your screen, you see the number three car, the Propane Plus, the lens machine, heading down for that right front wheel. And we talked about it. There is not a lot of damage done to the right side of that race car. 
But what the story is going to be here, Joe, is this is using up one tire. Early in the event, you can see the crew getting over the wall. Right front, they're changing. They're not making any other adjustments. So apparently, the uh, Jake Johnson crew like what they have with that race car, and the car goes down off the jack. And heading back out. And Jake Johnson making his way back off of pit road. And you look at uh, that right front tire that he'll get put on. They didn't make a lot of work and adjustments on the tire itself or on the suspension. And so we'll see if that had any impact with the contact that was made. Now, we talked a little bit earlier about the three pit stop race. So there are six tires that teams can take on pit road. And they also need to take at least fuel past lap 40 sometimes 40s, so yes. we won't really see any of the drivers that are running inside the top 10 or so come down pit road track position very important here you might see some of the drivers at the back of the pack having 13 laps under the green flag to be able to adjust their race car you see them uh, coming down pit road now to make some adjustments but from a strategy standpoint most of the leaders will stay out and try to get to that fuel window before they come down pit road for adjustment you see a literally a gaggle of cars there's the newman curb records number 77 down on pit road they're making a wedge adjustment a little tire pressure change to the right rear and now uh, the same type of a change is being made looks like oh maybe two turns on the right rear of the number 77 car you look at what they were doing there, right? So they're taking air out of the right rear tire. That tells me that his car was really, really loose out on the racetrack. That basically, you look at it this way. If you took a cup that you might got at your local convenience store, one side, the bottom is really narrow, and, and the, the top, top that you big. drink out of is really big. And if you roll that on a table, it makes a turn. And that's really what the tires are. They're small on the left side. They're big on the right side. And that adjustment is what is really critical in modified racing. And if you miss that, that can be the difference from winning and finishing 20. It certainly can be. And as simple as that, a minor little adjustment like that will make all the difference in the world. Let's recap the field for those of you watching on Flow. Justin Bonsignor, one of two leaders. Ronnie Silk was the early leader. He's setting in second. Doug Colby up to third. Bobby Santos is fourth. Carlson, Carlson Lofton in the fifth spot. Trevor Catalano is sixth. Patrick Emmerling is seventh. Craig Lutz is eighth. Kyle Bonsignor is ninth. And Eric Goodale is up to 10. We'll keep an eye on the rest of the field here as the race goes on. Continue to be impressed by the young 16-year-old Carson Lofton running in the fifth spot in car number 23. Has done a nice job here tonight. Started inside the top 10 with the eighth place starting position. Has picked up a couple of spots. Now, some of that has to do with the uh, Austin Beers and Jake Johnson incident. But he has shown poise here in just a handful of starts on the wheel and bottom by tour he certainly has and we can see we have the top three rookies so far carson lofton is in the fifth spot trevor catalano is sixth and then we go back to 12th for marcello rafano this is marcello rafano's maiden voyage on a super speedway he runs at stafford where he is an outstanding competitor in the SK Modifieds, a former champion in the support divisions as well. Driving for Mike and Michelle Davini. First time out for him. Chris, the crew chief, they're expecting big things. He said, I didn't get any seat time at all in practice here today. Getting ready to get back under the green flag here. Justin Bonsignor is the race leader. He will restart on the bottom. Ron Silk, who won the pole position and led the first 11 laps, will start to the outside. Doug Kobe, who looked strong in that first segment, will be third. Keep an eye on him in that bottom lane as that has proven to be a strong start. A little bit deeper in the pack. One car is out of shape. Melissa Fifield slow to the bottom on the restart. They stacked up behind her. Everybody pointed in the right direction. We stay under the green flag. Carson Lofton has moved down underneath Ronnie Silk red car to the right of your scene back up front here comes doug colby he puts the bolt with number seven new york to the front of the class lead change number three in the competition here good racing among the top five meanwhile carson lawton is right there carson tries to reel him in in the fourth position inside lane we've got a car pulling out of line to the bottom in the top 10 cars. Up front, Justin Bonsignor hot in the tire tracks of Doug Kobe. They go 1-2. A little bit of distance behind them to third, Ron Silk. But Justin Bonsignor is not content to ride in the second spot. He'll drive right to the bottom of the turn and take over the race lead one more time as they charge down the back stretch. 
it appears that Patrick Emmerling has worked his way up to the top six with car number one, the LFR house car. Just a few laps ago, he was at the bottom of the top 10. Here comes Ronnie Silk, moves to the inside. He'll make the move, and Silk now will move into the third position, making way as they continue to run. Now he works his way around Doug Kobe. Kobe falling back now, giving up two positions to move back to third. That car having a hard time keeping it on the bottom of the racetrack. You see him exiting a little bit higher off turn four. That allows Patrick Emmerling to close in, having a good solid run here early going. There's a 23 of Carson Lofton that we've been talking about, second generation driver. His dad, well known for modified competition here throughout the South, and Carson will generally run the races at Richmond Raceway, North Wilkesboro, Martinsville. We'll see him a lot on the Wheel of Modified Tour this uh, this season. It certainly is. There's a great look at him as he dives to the bottom of the racetrack. He has a completely different line, it appears, than the cars directly in front of him. He's got to settle in, and he is doing just that. Out in the front pack of cars, another great move by Patrick Emmerling, car number one. Now, Joe, we remember in the old days, Patrick Emmerling had his first major breakthrough on a super speedway. You were there to cover that. Yeah, he's been really good at these racetracks, and the Cup Series racetracks in particular, wins at Bristol, wins at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. You look at the strength that uh, Patrick Emmerling has had over the years. He'll be pulling double duty this weekend. He's got his NASCAR Xfinity Series car in the garage area. A guy that's trying to pull double duty in the win column, Ron Silk. He goes back to the point. Great action at the front. Just 25 laps in. We've already seen a handful of lap uh, chain, lead changes. We've seen three different leaders in Ron Silk, Justin Bonsignor, and Doug Kobe, all three champions of this series. Certainly are, and you saw a great move by the 16 of Silk when he took back the lead. Bonsignor is being patient. These two drivers have the true definition of patience. They know how to run hard, but they know how to run when the money is on the table. Silk is your leader. Meanwhile, Patrick Emmerling has moved into the third position with car number one. Emmerling is reeling in. You look at the times, the difference between those competitors is .443. Joe, Patrick Emmerling is coming. Yeah, he certainly is. You know, you look at a racetrack like Richmond Raceway where you've got to take care of those tires. You can run quick laps here, but you can do it using and abusing your equipment, sliding the car sideways, braking hard, getting into the corner. Ron Silk, Justin Bonsignor, they are some of the best at conserving equipment for the long run. Ease into the turn, ease back into the gas, especially here off turn two. You don't want to pitch the car sideways, so you burn up that right rear tire. And they know how to run fast laps while keeping the tires, the brakes, and the car under them. And that's going to be one of the things that they're going to have to do as this race goes on, especially when you look in the rear view mirror and you see somebody like Patrick Emmerling closing in quickly. He knows that that pressure is coming, but you have to stay disciplined as the race goes on. If you look at the situation, Patrick Emmerling started back in the 11th position. He did not get the qualifying run that he wanted. He has passed more cars on the racetrack than anybody currently. He has worked his way up among the top three positions. Kobe has settled back into the fourth spot, and Trevor Catalano is moved into the top five, Joe. That's no surprise to us. A little while ago, we saw the three car of Jake Johnson. He came down pit road. He got that right front tire, and Johnson has moved up inside the top 12 as he has rallied from the back of the pack. A little bit deeper in the pack, Anthony Cecily in the number 19 machine. There's Craig Lutz. Craig Lutz has not been able to really move much forward from where he started. He's ninth, just getting passed by Anthony Cecily. But how about that 17 car, the Extreme Motorsports machine? That is Marcello Refrano out of North Haven, Connecticut. His debut in the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour, doing a great job driving this car well into the top 10. He certainly is. We call him the pride of Italy. His family goes back and forth to Italy all summer long. They own wheel automotive in Connecticut and he's looking really good at this particular point back up front Bonsignor still leading the event the margin between first and second point one zero six 
I don't think we've seen the last of this two battle for the lead or swapping for positions either here, Joe. No, I think we're going to see a lot of this as the race goes on. Uh, Bonsignor and Ronnie Silk. Uh, remember, as we got to the end of last season, neither of them would even talk to each other. The teams wouldn't talk to each other. And being that they're the one and two teams on the circuit, they had a park right next to each other all weekend long. It's been uh, quite the battle over the years with them, and there's more to come for sure. Here's Bobby Labonte in the number 38 machine. He's got several wins in the NASCAR Cup Series, but none have come here at the Richmond Raceway, and he looked strong last year at this race. He was making moves and moving forward in the late going. He's already moving forward with the Hermes Sadler, Bill Stanley owned number 38. That car looking very sporty here in the early stages as he has just been able to move into the 12th position around Craig Lutz. Craig Lutz is starting to drop back a little bit. Tyler Ripkema is up to the 14th spot. Jake Johnson, you might wonder, after that front tire going down, he is just out of the top 10 in the 11th position. There he is to the inside of Marcello Rufano. Jake Johnson is a man possessed. He moves to the bottom side of the Extreme Motorsports car. The Lynn's propane machine has now broken in to the top 10. That car looks really, really good. Jake Johnson has a couple of pole positions already to his career in the Wheel of Modified Tour. He's had some days where he's been very, very strong. But this right now, recovering from that challenge in the right front tire that has gone down to drive inside the top 10 before they come and get their pit stops, uh, we're only you know, 113 laps to go. So much racing left to go for Jake Johnson. And he continues to march forward and continues to put cars behind him. Very impressive drive for him. Certainly is. Directly behind him is that number 14 machine. That is Bobby Santos. It's not your imagination. Usually he's running the Tineo number 44 car, but not today. Now, he competed with this car before here at Richmond, and he had a very good run with it. I think you're finding Santos, who's a very cautious driver, pacing himself at this particular time. There's the 14 car. Running directly, Melissa Fivefield, the 01 to the right of your screen. Your screen. Here comes Labonte again, Joe. He's trying to make the move around Marcello Rufano, who runs in the tire tracks of Santos coming off the turn. And Marcello Rufano in that neon number 17, he has lost the handle on that race car. You can see him really fighting it, especially up off turn number four. That car just does not want to stay underneath him, and I think that's why he started driving forward for a little bit. There you see it sliding up yep, off the turn. Exactly. He can't keep the car underneath him, and he's starting to slide backwards. You were talking about Bobby Santos in that 14 car. Very impressive drive for him at the Oswego Speedway just one year ago. Joe Stearns, who owns this modified, he came home third that day, has a second opportunity to run in this 14 car here today. And Billy Putney, who is well known in modified racing yes, in Western New York and beyond, is the, dri is the gentleman who's the crew chief on this race car. So it's a group of modified drivers and team that have been very successful in their own right over the time. Running part time on the series tour, they have put together very solid runs every time with a different driver. Every race they've showed up five consecutive races and continue to find race cars that have a lot of speed. You know, and that is not easy by any stretch of the imagination. Different drivers have a different feel for equipment. They like things a certain way. There is Carson Lofton and Anthony Cecily in a battle. We just saw a quick moment of that. Back to the front of the field. It's now Patrick Emberling on the back bumper. This is the LFR house car. Robbie Fuller and his staff put this thing together for Patrick Emmerling. They expected big things out of it in Florida during speed weeks. It didn't happen. But they said when they came to Richmond, they were going to give it its all. We just saw the number 16 of Silk's car. A little bit of a twitch off the turns. Joe, that gave Patrick Emmerling the runner-up spot. Emmerling isn't done yet. Car number one is looking for position number one. Patrick Everling, he's got Dale Hedquist as a crew chief on that race car. Dale Hedquist was a crew chief who led John McKennedy to the championship back in the 2022 season. And Dale has been working with the LFR team for a while in that one car and being able to make this Troyer car work out of the camp and trying to uh, align with uh, Robbie, who does the, all the work on these race cars. And that has been quick every single time they have come out on the racetrack. And Patrick Emmerling, 
is a very talented driver, so the combination working now. The battle is for the eighth and ninth position. Jake Johnson has worked his way back up to eighth. Now he has passed more cars than anyone else in the field. Behind him is Carson Lofton in the ninth spot. Marcello Rafano is still being shown at the bottom of the top 10. Even though that car is loose, he's still holding on. Labonte is working him over. There is Carson, celebrated a birthday yesterday, turning 16 years of age. First two smart races of the season. He dominated the racing action, was looking for the hat trip. Well, he said he didn't even understand what a hat trick was. But by the time they left, it was a Baldwin that was into the winner's circle for the $20,000 to win race at Sobo. Carson Lofton was a champion in modified competition at the Caraway Speedway, picked up a win there recently in modified competition, so momentum on his side. We saw the 17 car, Marcello Rafrano was starting to backpedal a little bit. He seemed to get the car back under him now, and Carson Lofton, who was quick early, now starting to fade. He was as high as running in the top five. Now Bobby Labonte is going to go underneath him, and that's going to knock him outside the top ten. Carson has got to get that car to the bottom. It just doesn't want to stick on the inside. Here comes Labonte. Carson is well aware of the fact that he's alongside. They head down into turn number one. It appears that Labonte has the position now. He gets the bite coming off the turn. And those two have spent a lot of time racing against each other here in the southeast. And they certainly know the style of each other. Bobby Labonte quickly making work of Carson Lofton. And Lofton just trying to hang on to that race car, hoping he gets a caution before he falls too far back. This battle that we're watching right now between Carson Lofton and Bobby Labonte is some nine and a half seconds behind the race leader, Justin Bonsignor, as they chase down the back straightaway. You know, Bobby Labonte, it's been so great to see him come back and run in modified competition, including here in the Wheel of Modified Tour to have a NASCAR Cup Series champion and a NASCAR Hall of Famer in the field and showing interest in modified competition certainly is significant. A guy like Ryan Newman, who's driving that 77 car tonight, he's always been into modified racing, even while he was an active Cup Series driver. And that adjustment that they made on that most recent stop He's been able to move up now inside the top 14, so Ryan Newman also moving forward. Let's shift back to the front of this field. Patrick Emberling took over the number two position. Ronnie Silk has been testing the waters again. He's setting back in that third spot. Watch him reel in on the back bumper. They come down the front straight away. Emberling pulls away a little bit, but going in on entry, it appears that Silk is able to close it up again. Directly behind those two cars, no surprises to us. One of the front runners in the Catalano team. Great run for Trevor Catalano, a racetrack that he has never seen before. 18 years old in that 56 car, just his second ever Wheel and Modified Tour start. If you uh, were with us earlier, we talked about his success at New Smyrna, came home fifth that day. And how about the 46 car that he just goes by, Craig Lutz, who is now off the pace, a lap down in that 46 machine as he is now running in the 22nd position, the first car lap down. Boy, another tough go for Craig Lutz as that car has all kinds of sideways off turn four. You know, when he has had so much success with this team, last year he drove for Danny Watts, the number 82 car. That team decided to go into retirement. Danny Watts will be missed by many on the wheel of the modified tour. And now he returns back and sets behind the wheel of this 46. I think you're going to see big things as they go to their favorite tracks like, of course, Thompson Speedway just coming up the next stop on the NASCAR Wheel of the Modified Tour as well. Just eight days from now, we have the opportunity to see uh, Icebreaker Weekend at Thompson Speedway in the quiet corner of Connecticut. That's where the tour will head next. But right now, the battle is on in Richmond. Justin Bonsignor out in front. Ron Silk trying to hold off a hard-charging Patrick Emerling. It's starting to come into the picture, continuing to be right there is Trevor Catalano. Now, one car going a lap down is the 24 car of Andrew Krause, and I think a lot of us thought that, that he was going to be strong today uh, because the caution flag comes out here for the second time today with 93 laps in. But uh, Andrew Krause was fastest in the first practice. Yes, he was. Did not qualify very well, and now he finds himself uh, towards the tail end of the field, just going a lap down. There is the Lakeland number 26 for Gary McDonald. You know, uh, we used to talk about uh, the 
guys that build the field that are competitive that don't have the big finances and all of that and Gary McDonald is one of those drivers kind of the little train that could as uh, he continues to come and and if you look at the stats on car number 26 you'll discover that Gary McDonald has a hundred and fifty one starts that's pretty impressive for a guy who's doing it out of his landscaping business, uh, him and his son. So hats off to the number 26 team. Second caution of the event. What do you think the pit strategy is going to be, Joe, in this one? Well, this is a great opportunity to do two things at once. You'll come down pit road, you get some fuel, you come down it again pit road and get some tires. Now, just as a reminder, the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour, you cannot take fuel and tires on the same pit stop. So teams will come in and likely come down pit road on consecutive laps. And they do that from a safety standpoint. So that way you don't have sparks coming off of those air guns as they're changing tires getting on the fires. Let's take onto the fuel that might be spilled as part of that pit stop. Let's take a look at what happened off turn four to the 26 car, the Lakeland landscape modified for Gary McDonald. This is just past uh, the Geico restart zone as he rolls into turn three. You see them before pit road going around. Doesn't look like he made any contact, nope. but he lost a handle down to the inside and that was enough to bring out the caution flag here. The second of the night that came out on lap 57. It was, he was running in the 24th position at the time. Andrew Krause, we were talking about him as a caution flag came out. He will get the free pass and will be able to get back onto the lead lap. So the timing worked out for Andrew Krause, but pit road is open. Justin Bontenure, Ronnie Silk, and the rest of the team will make their way down pit road for the first pit stop of the night. Well, pit action is about to unfold. And you can see the entire, well, a good percentage of the field is working its magic and heading down on pit road as we speak. Car number one, Patrick Emberling, finds his stall first. Way down at the other end is the 51 and the 16 team. Bonsignor is in. Ryan Stone is there. That Looks it's like Phil a lot of the are going to take... Uh, tires on this first stop. You see the 22 of Kyle Bonsignor. He's actually putting fuel in here on this stop. Yep. Three right tires rears. will be the story of the day for most of these drivers. They will keep the left front tire on the car the entire way, but they'll change right side tires and rear tires. Here you see Patrick Emmerling. Wow. Patrick Emmerling had an amazing quick in and out of the pits. Let's see about their strategy. There comes Justin Bonsignor. He will beat Ronnie Silk out of pit road. It is not often that you see anybody beat the 16 and the 51 off so of pit true. road. And that was just done by the one car of Patrick Emerling. Now, everybody will get off of pit road. They'll cycle back around. And you see them now onto the back straightaway, looking back for pit road again to try to get that fuel stop and get the uh, service completed. Here's a tw the three car, Jake Johnson on pit road. He'll take three tires this time. So that right front, he wore every bit of it off trying to gain that track position. He did, and he went from the back of the field to the front. Now heading back down on pit road. Let's see what's going to happen in this stop. As Bonsignor leads Ronnie Silk in. To be fuel only. There you see the 22 car. He had grabbed fuel the first time, came back yes, and got on... tires here on the second one. So we'll yes. see how that allows him to stack up when everybody goes back out. Emerling has already completed his service, as has Eric Goodale. Now Ronnie Silk leaves. Justin Bonsignor stalling a little bit on the exit of pit lane. And these two drivers that were leading early on are now going to be restarting uh, a little bit further back. They won't start in the front. Patrick Emerling, one of the quickest round of pit stops in that round and he is going to uh, have a good position when we get back under the green flag sure is the uh, fleet works of california number one car is uh quick on pit road quickly moves back out the charles lewandowski sponsored machine also heading back out of pit road and there is jake johnson but Jake Johnson makes his way back out onto the racetrack. We'll reset the starting lineup when we come back into the Virginias for Racing Lovers 150 for the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. Stay with us. The restart in the lineup is next.
Beautiful sight here in Richmond Raceway as the sun begins to set here at this three-quarter mile oval for the NASCAR Wheel of Modified Tour. The sun goes down, the yes, stars come out. And the heat is starting to become, well, very intensive, almost like the set of Lion King. But right now, these lions are about to roar and fire them back up. Two by two, we're ready, Joe. But in the front row, we've got two different competitors this time on the start. After the round of pit stops, Tommy Catalano uses pitch strategy to assume the race lead. They will wave off the reset start as oh. the caution lights come back on the Toyota pace car at the front of the field. But uh, Tommy Catalano will lead the field around to the green flag using strategy to his advantage. Now Patrick Emmerling had a very efficient pit, uh, pit stop to be able to come out second. And the drivers that picked up a lot of ground include the 58 car of Eric Goodale who picked up spots in the 22 car of Kyle Bonsignor who's also now inside the top 10. It appears that Ronnie Silk moves back into the four spot. Justin Bonsignor for five, Doug Colby for six, Kyle Bonsignor for seventh. But there's a look at the Fleetworks LFR house car at the front of this field, car number one. We saw that car come to the front of the field. They were not happy with qualifying today, but I think they discovered something, and now maybe that something was gone awry. So he's gone to the back of the field. We'll get more on that here in a moment to see why Patrick Emerling had to drop to the tail end of the field, but that will reset the lineup at the front. Tommy Catalano now the race leader for the first time today. Eric Goodale finds himself on the front row. Catalano spins the tires at the hit. They come across the line. Silk thought about going three wide, but here comes the top lane, and that's Eric Goodale around the outside to challenge for the top spot. Goodale works his magic in the upper groove. Outside lane looks racy here. Glued to the back bumper. It is Bonsignor trying to work over and keep Catalano to the bottom side lane. They come rumbling off the turn, back down to the line. Bonsignor is still there. Meanwhile, bid for the lead. Brand new leader again. Justin Bonsignor puts Ryan Stone prepared race car to the front of the class. Out front, Justin Bonsignor at the point. Eric Goodale from Long Island, New York, able to uh, get the job done to slide into second. The battle's done now for third. Ron Silk working the bottom lane of the racetrack. Look at these drivers now. They've all got fresh tires. They're trying to use the best of them to move forward and gain as many spots as possible. They are two by two from third on back. As now Ronnie Silk works the inside. That silver number 16 car. Doug Colby in the black number seven. Runs in his tire tracks and look out. Coming to the bottom of the racetrack. Car number 32. Tyler Ripkema and now Ryman Newman puts the 77. The curb records machine. It's making some music at the front of the field. He was three wide off turn four, split the middle between Tyler Ripkema, went to the outside there, picked up a couple of spots, and the rocket man, Ryan Newman, is moving forward in that 77 inside the top 10. Meanwhile, we've got trouble though. It is Tyler Catalano who has gone around to the 84 car. Bobby Labonte is also involved, and the caution flag is out. 80 laps to go for the third time today. Oh. And Patrick Emerling, who had one of the fastest cars on the racetrack, led laps, and got sent to the back. Right front damage, his night is done. Certainly is, the right front wheel is sheared back. It almost looks exactly like the Austin Beers situation where the right front was peeled back. We hope they've got a look at the replay. Here's the 32 and the 77. We just took a look at it. That's a different pack of cars. Let's take a look at the replay and see exactly what happened here in this incident involving Bobby Lamani. Patrick Emmerling and Tyler Catalano. Here it is as they come up off turn number two. Now the incident happened over in turn three. And we'll keep an eye, these drivers are running to the right of the frame. Remember, here is the one car. Catalano and then Labonte tries to correct, but the one car was there. Didn't have much of a choice. Let's see if we get a different look at it, maybe a different angle if at all possible. Catalano's machine was the first car that got a little bit squirrely going in. Emerling was trying to uh, get by this, and he nearly was. It's when the Labonte 38 came across the racetrack when he overcorrected. That's yep. what caught Patrick Emerling. Emerling had threaded the needle until Labonte's car just darted to the right. He had nowhere to go, caught both the left and right front tires, and that will end the night for Emerling. So that's a tough break, having to restart at the back of the pack and then not having the ability uh, to have that track position that he had at the start really cost him the opportunity uh, and, and put him in that position. 
and we're still looking to find out the information. We think it possibly might have something to do with the pit stop on pit road. If you go back to the last caution, you'll remember that Patrick Emling was among the first cars to make it back out. We'll see if there was a penalty there. We're checking with NASCAR Race Control, Jimmy Wilson and company, and we'll be finding out the answer to that situation in just a moment. As we look back at the field, now into the top 10, it appears that Marcello Raffaello has moved into the top 10. Anthony Cecily is just out of it, and Bobby Santos. There's a look at the Fleetworks number one was among the quickest cars. There's Marcello Rapano, the pride of Italy, now among the top 10 cars, running directly behind the number 56 car there in line, one of the Catalano cars. Is, uh, Got the information on the one car for uh, Patrick Emerling. He had a commitment line violation coming down pit road, okay. which is what cost him, and that's why he had to start at the back on that restart and so that explains the scenario so that mistake for patrick emerling really put him in position out on the racetrack we've got a moment uh, under the caution flag here third caution of the day in the virginia's for racing lovers 150 at richmond raceway we'll come back with more in the nascar wheel and modify tour right after this Green flag is out here at Richmond Raceway, and we're back underway with Justin Bonsignor working his way to the race lead. Rodney Silk slides into second as Eric Goodale up in the outside lane, sliding backwards. He gets shuffled to the outside, and that moves him further back in the fourth spot. That puts Doug Kobe up to the third position on the bottom of the racetrack in the black number seven. Catalano refuses to be left out of this big dance. He is currently running to the inside. Catalano has broken away into the fourth spot now, Joe, as they come off the turn. Outside lane looks racy, and we've got a bunch of competitors that are now threading the needle to get to the front. That is Tommy Catalano, who two years ago nearly won this race, was leading with 11 laps to go when Justin Bonsignor took the race lead away. How about the 22 car of Kyle Bonsignor? Kyle Bonsignor having a good run here after this round of pit stops. 
made some ground on pit road. They started 10th today, but had fallen back on the initial green flag, and the 22 car now starting to march forward. Meanwhile, we look a little further back at the bottom of the top 10. Ryan Newman is back in the 10th position, or just out of the top 10, and Carson Lofton is in the 11th position currently as we speak. Ronnie Silk closing up that gap again. Meanwhile, side-by-side -side battle with Catalano on the outside and Goodale to the inside. It appears that they are side-by-side -side off the turn. The GAF number 58. Dive bond move now. Look at the 32. Three wide as they head to the bottom of one. That was a bold move by Tyler Ripkema to go all the way to the bottom. Gets two for one in turn one. Now Goodale still battling with Tommy Catalano to the outside. Right behind him, he's got Trevor Catalano, his younger brother, on the heels of the 56. And coming into the picture now, the three of Jake Johnson. Up front, the picture remains the same. It's painted between Ron Silk and Justin Bonsignor, crossing him up off turn two. Bonsignor could not do it. He pushes Silk into turn three. While that's been going on at the front of the field, Kobe is starting to close up the gap. As they come off the turn, it's still Silk. He continues at the start-finish line to pull away. Margin between first and second, 0.166. Back in third is Doug Colby. In the fourth position, Tyler Ripka, but we haven't even talked about him much. And here comes Jake Johnson. He just refuses to be left out of the top five positions here. You can't ask for any better racing than this here at Richmond Raceway. Jake Johnson on the move. Remember, he had that right front damage on an incident 11 laps into today's race with Austin Beers. He's had a battle back from there. Now he's got equal tires with everybody else, and he's running forward right now in the seventh spot, challenging Trevor Catalano in the 56 for the sixth position over in turn four. No question behind them. It's the GAF machine. Eric Goodale back up front running in his tire tracks. It is still Justin Bonsignor. Bonsignor takes a peek at the inside. No challenges here. Margin is starting to, well, pull away just a bit. But Doug Colby is coming back to life with car number seven, New York. Now, Colby's run a very quiet strategy today. He went up there, he led a couple of laps, and he settled back into third. He's been content to ride. I'm curious to see if Doug Colby, as we watch Justin Bonsignor go back up to the race lead, is holding his cards here a little bit, biding his time, maintaining track position, and saving his equipment for the final dash to the finish. Certainly does appear that way. He puts the front chrome horn to the back bumper of Ronnie Silk's machine. They come off the turn, top three cars, nose to tail. Tyler Ripka is right up in the top four with car number 32, the Musco machine. And there is Jake Johnson trying to get down underneath Catalano. Now he changes his line completely and goes up the hill. Goodale's got a car that works to the bottom. Can't hold it there, Joe, as they come back to the stripe. Jake Johnson has been the story of this race from the back to the front. He's been dramatic, and he's had the flair that we enjoy watching in that historic three-car old blue, one of the most legendary cars in modified racing, and Jake Johnson is adding to that legend here tonight. That car on rails, what he doesn't have though is a track position. He's fighting in the bottom half of the top 10, trying to make his way up to the front and see if he can challenge back inside the top five as he was at the start of this race. Greg Fournier, of course, is the crew chief on that car, kind of one of the silent guys. Here's another bid. 32 machine in fourth for Tyler. Drifts up the racetrack. Catalano moves back in. Tommy Catalano picks up the spot. Meanwhile, here comes Jake Johnson again. He puts it down in the center of the two white lines dips to the bottom of the racetrack, but Tommy Catalano will take back the position. He's got fourth, Tyler's back in fifth, and Trevor Catalano is up to the sixth position. Trevor Catalano a lap ago right here off turn four at a pretty big moment. The car wiggled on him. That's what allowed Tyler Ripkema to get by him. Now, Trevor Catalano goes to the inside of the racetrack, picks up the spot over Tyler Ripkema, who loses it down in turns one and two, walks up the racetrack, he gathers it back in, and Jake Johnson gave him enough room to recover the race car and not send the 32 spinning. It appears that Jake Johnson is going to try his strategy again. Looks to the outside, dive bombs down to the inside. Bottom shot, turn number one, Jake Johnson is moved to another position up. Car number 32, he's now up to the top six, and he isn't done yet. 
on the move, Jake Johnson. Now we saw Tyler Ripkema was battling with the race leaders up to fourth. He might have used all the goody off of his race car and his tires because that has gone away. He is now backpedaling very quickly back to the seventh position as things have calmed down up front. Justin Bonsignor pacing Ron Silk. Bonsignor, who won this race two years ago, would love to go back to victory lane here. This is one of his best racetracks on the circuit. And he's got Ron Silk, who runs here today at Richmond as one of five tracks that he has never won at in the Wheel Modified Tour. Now, granted, we've only had 13 races here, but Ron Silk wants to check the box off here at Richmond. He certainly does. And, uh, of course, with Phil Moran behind him, just like Ryan Stone behind Justin Bonsignor, they have their own strategy. And, of course, bragging rights. It's very important. You come to race, but you come to win. Those two competitors are winners in this class, and so is in Doug Kobe, the six-time champion with car number seven, New York, setting back in that third position. Up to the fourth spot, still Tommy Catalano. Trevor Catalano, his brother, is in fifth. Jake Johnson is sixth. Eric Goodale is seventh. We talked at the strategy, the keys to the race earlier today, that pit stop adjustment. You see those three cars at the front of the field. Those crew chiefs that you just rattled, rattled off, Ryan Stone, Phil Moran, Tommy Baldwin, are so good at adjusting from that sunset that we saw a little while ago to now full darkness here at Richmond Raceway, racing under the lights, making the adjustment in the late going. This one more pit stop likely to come if a caution flag comes out. That is going to be the key to the race, and that's no surprise why you see those drivers at the front week in and week out because they know how to adapt to the racetrack as it changes over the course of 150 laps. Speaking of adapting, Joe, car number 77, Ryan Newman has moved into the top eight. He is directly behind Eric Goodale. Now he's come a long way to get back to the front of this field, but he continues to apply the pressure. I think you've got a great battle shaping up with Jake Johnson in sixth, Goodale in seventh, and Ryan Newman in third. There's that conga line as they head down the back straightaway. The first race in the Wheel Modified Tour was run here at Richmond Raceway in 1990. That day, Rick Fuller won the race. He drove a number 77. It was a Chase family, Kurt Chase. That's correct. Number 77, it was and it's the, got a lot of history at this race. It sure show. does. It was a polar beverage machine. Rick Fuller's daughter competes at Stafford. She's quite a driver, and we all know the history of the Fuller Racing family, and Rick Fuller is at top of the food chain there. Back up front, here comes Silk. Took a little bit of a look at it to the bottom, but then again, Justin Bonsignor's spotter says, uh-uh, he tucks it down low. Justin Bonsignor, who had the opportunity to race in the Arkham and Art Series race at the Daytona International Speedway during Speed Weeks earlier this year, that normally would have had the opportunity. Ron Silk, he would have had the chance to be able to go and participate in the test at Arca, but he said, you know what, I can't make it. Justin Bonsignor, second in the championship standings. He took him up on that opportunity, went to the test and said, you know what, maybe I can race at Daytona. And they did just that. They raced the Rhett Jones Racing number 30, had a good run going until about halfway through an oil line ruptured on the race car, and he wasn't there for the finish. But he said, what a thrill of a lifetime, an opportunity to race at the World Center of Racing. And Justin Bonsignor, during that race, certainly made a lot of the modified drivers proud of their open wheel competitor running in the Arkham Art Series. That certainly day. has. And we've had so many great modified drivers move up to that level. So his name goes to that list of superstars competing for the Wheel and Modified Tour. Inside move, couldn't do it, made the shot down low with the number 16 car. And that, of course, the Blue Mountain machine car, Future Homes number 16, looking racy, beautiful sunset, setting the stage and lighting up the skies for this one. Meanwhile, a little further back, there's the 56 car. Trevor Catalano just went by his older brother, Tommy Catalano, in the 54 car. Very impressive run by both of these teams. You know, the Catalano family has been at the Wheel of Modified Tour for many, many years, and, and they have been grinding it out, haven't had the results and the success that they have wanted. And all of a sudden this year, they surprised everybody when they came out and said, hey, we're going to bring three cars to the racetrack. And uh, it's a lot of effort. Is Ronnie Silk able to get by it? Justin Bonsignor for the race lead here with 46 laps to go. But that combination, that family dynamic, even their mom, 
races than modified race cars. The only one who doesn't is dad. All the boys do. The family is heavily invested in it. And what a run for both of those teams having two cars inside the top five. That's a banner day if they can bring it home for the Catalano family. It certainly is. And they're just doing a masterful job, as we said at that. They continue to run. Now pulling away just a bit is the number 56 machine of Trevor Catalano. Tommy Catalano is settling back in, but there's two fast race cars. They do the area of the country, upstate New York and Buffalo proud. The fans that support them and come out to support them. And you're right, Joe. The mom races, she's good. We have a lot of great veteran women drivers in the sport as well that have made their mark in modified racing. Tommy Catalano gave his younger brothers a lot of the equipment and cars that he had scienced out over the past couple of years, uh, doing that and providing them with a good footing to be able to start in the modified series. And so he took a little bit of a step back to do that in a different approach, uh, but that approach certainly is paying off. But a great story with the Catalano family. We continue to document the three car, though, of Jake Johnson. That pass by Eric Goodale moves him into the top six now for Jake Johnson as he is trying to crack the top five and see if he can get back to where he was early on. You see the 77 of Ryan Newman starting to come into frame. He is running eighth right now, starting to see if he can put pressure on the back of the 58 of Eric Goodale. You know, interestingly enough, among the quickest cars on the racetrack, it's not a stretch of your imagination. It is Jake Johnson. He has come from the back, tire went flat, beginning of the race, you saw that come from pit road came back out and now here comes ryan newman again newman takes a peek to the inside goodale tries to get that car to run to the bottom and it doesn't want to stick there it did initially on the last restart but then when he's forced to drift up a higher lane he is in trouble with that car at this point in the event here comes santos car number 14 looking for the opening down low as they come off the turn you see Ryan Newman uh, right ahead of them using a very unique line. Santos able to get underneath Eric Goodale as Goodale now losing a ton of ground. Watch the 77 car of Ryan Newman. He uses a high exit up off turn four as he loses a nose this time by to carry momentum off the corner. And then he dives down into turn one and cuts that corner off a little bit shorter. Watch the lower entry that he has getting down into turn one. And he's been able to gain a lot of ground there. That's how he was able to get by Eric Goodale. That's a perfect call of that situation. What's happening? happening there but these two competitors will call this youth versus opportunity youth versus the veteran here comes Newman again looking high to the outside he'll bring it down into turn number one stays up a lane but look at Jake Johnson he dives on to the bottom and Joe there is where Newman is planning his strategy and now Santos is moving right in. Trying to maximize everything they can out of these race cars. Bobby Santos has been pretty quiet here tonight in that 14 car. He's running in the ninth position directly behind the 77 of Ryan Newman. Uh, not typical for Bobby Santos. When you look at all the success that he's had at large racetracks like the New Hampshire Motor Speedway, he'll be quiet all day. And then at the end, all of a sudden, Bobby Santos is the one holding the checkered flag. And he's moved his way forward, but he's been stuck right about that ninth or tenth spot. He certainly night. has. He seems to be struggling a bit right there. But you are totally right. His dad says it best. He says, my son is a closer. He doesn't use up a lot of equipment or use up the race car. So Santos with car number 14 setting back in the eighth position. Goodale drops back to ninth. Tyler Ripkema is in the tenth spot. And Carson Lofton is just out of the top ten in 11. There's that battle. Jake Johnson continues to try to shake off the curb records machine of Newman. Can't do it. Santos is in striking distance. Now, Newman, little different line this time. Coming off the turn, Joe, here comes Santos. This is the experience of Ryan Newman. You can see how he's changing that line, close right in on Jake Johnson. Had a run last time off turn two, but decided not to dive to the inside and save it for the front straightaway. Trying to set up this pass around Jake Johnson, but Ryan Newman doing everything he can to get that little bit of extra speed out of that 77. Here's that high exit this time, off turn four. We'll see if he can close into the back bumper of Johnson and try to dive underneath him in turn one. Here he goes to the bottom. Great move to the inside this time, but look at Jake Johnson up on the wheel his spotter is driving him through and he'll take back the spot unbelievable run for jake johnson meanwhile here comes newman again 
thinks twice of it this time and runs right in the tire tracks. This now guy, he's going to dive to the bottom. He's got a good run this time, and he's got position to the bottom of the racetrack. But Jake Johnson's got momentum in the high lane. But this time, Newman able to draw even off turn number two. Lap traffic ahead, Melissa Fightfield and Gary McDonald, and that will force Ryan Newman to fall back in line. You know, you look at New Smyrna, and it was a, a situation where Jake Johnson had to come down pit road for a penalty yes. under the green flag. That put him behind the eight ball early. He still finished ninth. Today, early on in the race, that right front tire after contact with Austin Beers all of a sudden now has to battle his way back. Boy, as the season goes on, I can only imagine if Jake Johnson has a smooth race, how much of a contender he's going to be in that three car. He certainly is, and he is the guy to watch in this event. Newman now with one slip. He has dropped back about two car lanes behind the number three car a few minutes ago he was right alongside that's how quickly it all can change but that is the continued battle going on for the sixth and seventh position there is jake johnson the lens propane machine the bowler racing enterprises operation looking good they keep digging in this driver also completes on the monaco fry track series with a different car that Ryan Stone assists him with the handling on, and he is going to be a guy to contend with Matt Hirschman for the title in 2024. So this battle will come down in just a moment. It is the battle between uh, Jake Johnson and Ryan Newman out on track as Ron Silk continues to hold the race lead. We're getting down towards the end, but the caution flag comes out for the fourth time here today. And the caution is for debris. And I think we are watching that battle with a three car yes. of- uh, There it is. Jake Johnson, and you saw on the right front that a piece of debris, either he was hit by it, or it just came off the race car. But debris out on the racetrack here in turn one. We'll have pit stops coming up in a moment. 27 laps to go at Richmond. Back at the Richmond Raceway, the fourth caution of the night slows the field here in the final stages and sets up what could be a dramatic final pit stop for the finish of this one. Jake Johnson was entertaining us as he drove sure through the was. field. But remember, early on in the race, we've talked about it throughout, he had to take that extra right front tire. He's only got two tires on pit road. Everybody else in front of him could take three tires, but Two tires at the end of the race will mean a faster pit stop. Could that work to the advantage of Jake Johnson? You know, as you watch Jake Johnson come to the front of this field, he had to use up a tire after he had the flat tire go down. But then as he started to settle in on this last run, you saw the situation, and I think he could get the job done with a quick pit stop on pit road. Look at the beautiful setting in the sky as all the uh, alignments from heaven above align on this Good Friday for uh, this big event here from Richmond. And as we had said at the start of this one, we are not surprised at what we've seen so far. Car number 25 is the uh, Free car. pass. Yep, or, free uh, pass Brian car, Roby. and that's Brian Roby, the New Hampshire State Champion. He struggled a bit in Florida and has been struggling a bit here today. Very talented driver in the Maurice Enterprises car. So pit road is open, and this final pit stop of the night will determine who gets to start out front and who will have an opportunity to win this race today. Remember, it'll be three tires, I would imagine, for most teams, but they don't have to take all three with 25 laps to go. And the setup, the adjustments are going to have to be different for the short run that we'll have towards a checkered flag. Everybody is in. Ronnie Silk and the 16 team will go around. It looks like rear tires for them. Yep. Looking at that right front as well, it looks like a three tire stop for the 16. The 51 of Justin Bonsignor will be a three tire stop for him directly behind. And meanwhile, back to the Jake Johnson team. 
right rear tire is the story for them. Right front tire. Well, remember, we talked about it. They've only got two tires. Now, Bonsignor again makes it out in front of Ronnie Silk. And then it looks like the 77 will be the third car of pit road. And that, of course, will be Ryan Newman. We'll see what happens. Two cars left on pit road as work still continues. And it appears that the final cars are heading back on the racetrack as well. So we'll reset the uh, lineup as everybody comes off of pit road here. But this is now turned into what is a race of long green flag runs into a very short dash it's a sprint to the finish and it's going to be right down to a friday night short track shootout modified style the way short track racers love it we'll come back with the finish in a moment the virginia is for racing levers 150 from richmond raceway the checkered flag is next Back here at the Richmond Raceway, the intensity has just gotten that much higher with a late race caution, the fourth of the day. Pit stops underway and completed. The front row looks the same with Justin Bonsignor and Ronnie Silk, but a new challenger in the form of Ryan Newman now will restart in the third position with Doug Kobe. Uh, what a show this has been, action throughout the entire race, and it all come down to a short sprint to the finish. Sure does, and that's what modified racing was found upon a dash for the cash to the end of the race double file excitement and you'll hang on to your seat and the edge of it for each and every circuit this is not over with yet by any stretch of the imagination here you look at the cars the way they came out of pit road for some they struggle just a bit for others a whole different deal but up front all eyes under the perfect sunset I want to update you on the three car of Jake Johnson. We talked a lot about that right front tire that he changed. NASCAR has allowed that tire to be in that first stop an emergency change tire, which meant that he was able to take three tires the first stop, three tires on this stop. So Jake Johnson does have the same complement of tires as everybody else running inside the top five. So NASCAR does allow you in certain situations to take an emergency change tire, and that's what that right front tire was for Jake Johnson. The reason for that is the tire was cut and went down. They must have examined the tire, the NASCAR officials, and decided that that was the situation and the case for this particular team. That is a break that could be perhaps the luckiest move for this team of the night. After they overcame the diversity of contact, came from the back to the front, and they're still coming to the front. But there is less than 20 laps when we go back to Green Joe, and in 20 laps, anything and everything can happen. We saw it a year ago. We've seen it before here at Richmond. And in the front row, two of the very best in the business, Justin Bonsignor, Ronnie Silk. Silk wants this one bad, Bonsignor, and they're done that. We've had two great races to start the 2024 campaign. 19 laps to go when they get back under the green flag here at the Richmond Raceway. You got two guys that certainly are rivals in the sport in the form of Justin Bonsignor and Ron Silk. And Ryan Newman running there in third. He has four modified victories to his credit. The last one came in 2011, 13 years ago, that Ryan Newman has tasted the sweets of a wheel of modified tour victory lane. He's in with, within reach as a green flag comes out with 19 laps to go. Three wide, they go to the bottom of turn number one. The new leader emerges, Ryan Newman, with a bold move to the inside. Meanwhile, Ronnie Silk pulls back in front. Newman is stuck on the bottom. Here comes Doug Kobe in the seven New York. Bonsignor goes from the lead back to fourth, maybe fifth, but Ron Silk away with it, 18 to go. As they come across the line, the battle is on for second. Ryan Newman in the 77, working to the bottom lane of the racetrack. Here comes the outside of Doug Kobe and Trevor Catalano working to the top side as well. Catalano makes his magic there. Look a little further back to the right of your screen. 
Here comes Jake Johnson down low to the inside. Good move, shuffle back to the fourth position. Meanwhile, the 56 machine of Catalano has moved back in the third. Short time, it is Bonsignor. Look a little further back, here's Jake Johnson. He's right behind Bobby Santos with car number 14. Well, you see Justin Bonsignor really sent it in there on Ryan Newman. He was not happy with the way Newman drove him on the restart, how aggressive he was. Now Bonsignor right to the back bumper of Doug Kobe, pulls alongside into turn one, challenging for the runner-up spot. Here comes Bonsignor, tries to make the move, and he does. Meanwhile, down the back straight away, here comes Catalano, trying to reel in on the back bumper of Kobe. Silk is still the leader, four cars moving to the inside. Here comes Catalano, we've got a problem. It's Eric Goodale collected along with Tyler Ripkema in the number 32. Both these drivers running around the top 10, ninth in 10th when the caution flag came out. 15 laps to go, the fifth caution of the night. And Tyler Ripkema, heavy right front damage for the driver out of Owego, New York. And Eric Goodale, left front, knocked off of his race car. He at one point had a solid run, was within reach of the top spot. And now heavy damage on both ends of that race car. You know, you can say that about both of those competitors because Tyler also was running good. Looks like a tire. Nope, Tyler Ripkema. He's dragging the rim yep, on the right front. dragging the rim. He's heading back or trying to with that number 32 car. He was up as far as the top five at one point. And then, as we said on this last caution, came out of the pits a little bit late. And there you have it. Sparklers flying as it's steel on asphalt down on pit road. And a tough break for him. This is a great team of independent family racing operation, and they are just shy of a victory. Let's take a look at what happened between Tyler Ripkema and Eric Goodale as they were battling for the ninth position on the racetrack. They're running side by side. You see the 32 underneath, Craig Lutz directly ahead. He got a little bit loose, and it was helped from behind. The 22 of Tyler Ripkema, uh, or the 22 of Kyle Bonsignor into Tyler Ripkema, and that sent him sideways and into the 58 of just uh, Eric Goodale as they went through turn four. Get another look at it here. Yeah. Watch the 22 of Kyle Bonsignor as he comes into turn three. Bends it in and just ever so slight right. contact. Into the little back of touch. Front. When he does, the right front hits the left front of the Goodale machine. That is the problem for Goodale and the problem for Ripkema with the 32 car as he has cut a right front tire as Goodale has cut a left front tire. Back up front. Marcello Rafana, who had a great run earlier, the pride of Italy, in the Mike and Michelle Davini owned race car. Well, he'll have the free pass, so he pulls up ahead of the race leader and will be able to get uh, back on the lead lap. So as cleanup continues here on the racetrack, for the 58 car of Eric Goodale, we're within sight of the finish. A final shootout is next. We'll be back in a moment from Richmond.
We're back from Richmond, and we remind those of you watching on Flow, the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tours, next stop is one of my favorite stops as it goes to Thompson Speedway for the Motorsports Park running of the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. That's happening next weekend. The turnaround time is unbelievable. Then it's on to May 4th to Monadnock Speedway. May 18th is Riverhead Raceway, and my favorite, June 1st, is at Seacock Speedway. Joe. We are in for a great 2024, and there is four spectacular stops, as there's no stopping now, Joe. I'm just trying to get through this one. This was an outstanding race so far. We saw action uh, from the top to the bottom. Great storylines in this one. But now it all comes down to this. We're down to the final few laps and nine to go when they get the green flag. You've got this time Ron Silk, Justin Bonsignor inverted on the front row. And how about that Trevor Catalano in the outside hanging up with three series champions in the outside, acting like he belongs there, and he's got an opportunity as well. Pace car is in. We're ready for the restart with nine laps to go in the Wheel and Modified Tour. They come rumbling off turn number four. Silk with a slight advantage. Here comes Doug Kobe. Kobe takes a look at the bottom. Bonsignor goes up the hill. Here comes Ryan Newman. Newman now settles into third. Catalano three wide. Johnson to the bottom. Trevor Catalano gets sideways. They stack up behind the caution flag comes out. Nobody went around spinning, but the caution flag came out as smoke billowing off those race cars midway down the back straightaway. That could have collected a lot of race cars, and the caution flag came out before it did. And what a race it was between Ron Silk and Doug Kobe. Unbelievable there on that half a lap of the restart. Certainly was. We hope we can take a look at this again. This was amazing competition, and what a great save, not just by one competitor, but competitors running among the top six positions, all doing their best to keep their cars back in line and keeping them in forward motion. And that's exactly what we've seen on that last restart. You think you've seen anything yet? Let me tell you something. We're down with less than eight laps to go when we go back to Green Joe. Let's take a look at what happened on that restart. This is up off turn two. You see the 51 of the outside lane of Justin Bonsignor. They're three wide. Trevor Catalano with the 56 in the middle. Johnson get loots on the bottom. Ever so slight contact. You see the 56 gather it back in. Everybody's scattered. Contact was made with Craig Lutz, but they continued on and kept everything pointed in the great the right direction. Excellent driving by those drivers. But look at this. Look at this. Three wide as they came off turn two. And the rookie, Catalano, found room to the bottom. But Johnson, when he got sideways, sent the 56 out of shape on the back stretch. Have to give credit where credit is due by Santos. He backed out of it just a moment to allow Catalano to straighten back up. But amazing competition in this one. There is Bobby Santos in the number 14 car. Deja vu. We're going to try it all over again. Will it be a repeat performance? Everybody knows what everybody else is doing. The spotters are up on Broadcast Central. They are determining and planning their strategy to get their driver to the front of the field and in for a huge payday from Richmond. Now, up front, we see Tyler Ripkema, who's running 16th. He will have the beneficiary and will be able to come back around as the free pass. Now, one thing to note is that we did not complete a whole lap. Now, Correct. Doug Kobe was able to drive by Ron Silk on the bottom and take over the race lead. However, by the way the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour works, they set the lineup based on the start finish line. They did not complete the full lap. They go back to the prior lap, at which point in time, Ron Silk was a leader, Justin Bonsignor was second, and Doug Kobe was third. And so they will restart in that order. Now, I was going to say, as I saw Kobe in line behind Ron Silk, that he was going to have to draw the unenviable position of starting on the outside lane, which is not proven good for the drivers up front. But now I think he might have got a little bit of help. He'll start third, right where he did the last time when he the took the lead. The big question is, though, on this, did his car suffer any damage? We saw there was a little bit of contact as he was involved in that jingle as well. Hopefully that is not the case for his team. Back down on pit road, we've got another car in and we are about ready to get him doubled back up as we work our magic to the closer in this event. 
And you're talking, of course, of the 51 of Bonsignor. Yes. Who will restart second. Kobe was cleared away uh, with the race lead. No harm, no foul there. And then uh, Trevor Catalano looks like he's in line in the fourth position and uh, apparently will restart there as well. So still working here under the caution. They come back around this time through. There are still four laps left to go in regulation. And you look at the tires on these race cars, uh, you know, they came in and we saw the green flag with 19 laps to go. They're still basically sticker tires. So, you know, everybody can let it all hang out and be aggressive here in the final few laps of this one. Here they go, doubled up now. Again, Silk on the inside, Bonsignor. Doug Colby inside of that second row. Trevor Catalano was right up in that front pack of cars, and he is on the outside. Be curious to see how Ronnie Silk protects the bottom. We've seen restart after restart where that bottom lane, you try to be very aggressive from the inside of that second row. And Silk has lost the lead that way a couple of times here tonight. I'm curious to see if getting down into turn number one, he's a little bit more defensive here with only three laps to go when they get the green. True story there, but we got to see if there is able or it will be a situation where Doug Colby will be able to follow Silk to that bottom. Newman is there in that third row on the inside. Blue number 77. They wobble just a bit. Three wide, almost four wide. They come into turn number one. Bonsignor has it by inches. Joe off the turn. It is still silk, but for how long? Outside lane, Justin Bonsignor trying to hold off the challenge for Ron Silk at the bottom. Bonsignor out in front, but Silk to the inside lane draws even. They'll come to the line. Two laps to go with Trevor Catalano waiting in the third spot, the rookie contender. Just his second start in the mix. He's doing a great job sitting there in third. Colby gets shuffled back. Here comes Bonsignor. Tries to make the slingshot to the inside. Bonsignor side by side with Ron Silk. They come off the turn down to the line. Bonsignor working his magic at the stripe. One lap to go. This isn't over yet. It's Justin Bonsignor muscling his way to the bottom in turn two. Silk is right there as they come off turn number two. They come together on the back straightaway. Silk battling to the outside. Bonsignor to the bottom. They'll come to the checkered flag this time. Out in front. Bonsignor nose is out in front. But here comes Silk to the outside, and Bonsignor will win it. Bonsignor will win it. The margin of victory was so close, it's almost unbelievable. Unofficially, Ronnie Silk to finish in second. Great run, an amazing run for Trevor Catalano. And what about Bobby Santos to come back unofficially in fourth? And Jake Johnson, the comeback kid of the event, will finish in the top five. Doug Kobe, apparently that last contact, it gave him a problem. He dropped back to six. Greg Lutz was seventh. Kyle Bonsignor was eighth. Carson Lofton was ninth. And Tommy Catalano would round out the top ten.